Hello Tech Pros, episode 98. Value your own time. You know, your time is important. You can work on side projects, you can, you know, or you can spend a lot of time in your in your core career, but make sure it's always transparent to you. Make sure that you are putting in the amount of work that you want to put into something. Welcome to the podcast where I chat with professionals who are getting the job done using technology seven days a week. Each week we start with Motivation Monday. Tuesday is about productivity, Wednesday, leadership, Thursday, technology, Friday, people and communication, Saturday, entrepreneurship, and Sunday, being unplugged. All right, let's get started. Hello, Tech Pros. This is Chad Bostic, and I'm excited to introduce our featured guest today, Keith Chima. Happy Sunday, Keith. Hey, what's up, Chad? Not a lot, man. I am trying to unplug and unwind and relax this weekend. How about yourself? Yeah, me too. Awesome. (laughs) Especially you. Uh, Keith Achima is a software developer at a healthcare startup and founder of Newsbrute.com, a web app that discovers and previews the most popular video game articles of the day and sorts them in order of relative popularity. Dude, that sounds awesome. (laughs) Well, yeah, well, I like it. I think it's useful. I tried to make a you know website that I think that I would use myself, and I do. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, let's uh, before we get into news brute and how you unwind and relax for the weekend, tell us a little bit about uh, what you do professionally. Right. So I'm a uh, I'm a full stack software developer at uh, Aver Incorporated. It's the small uh, healthcare startup here in Columbus, Ohio. Um, what we do is we're, is we're kind of working on the uh, healthcare payment model um, and trying to, I mean, there's kind of this drive to move towards a uh, fee for value sort of payment model where the amount of money places gets, I mean, I mean like a doctor's office gets, would be based on the outcomes, the patient outcomes. And uh, there's also some ideas in there like prospective payments. So rather than getting in unified billing, so rather than getting 10 bills, uh, well after your procedure, you don't know how much they're going to cost ahead of time. Um, it's the same amount regardless of how the procedures worked out for you. In an ideal situation, you might end up with one bill ahead of the procedure. So you know how much it's going to cost. You can shop around. Um, and ideally, I mean, it might be pay- based on the outcome or something, or like you pay the same amount regardless of, um, of what procedures you ultimately end up getting. So if you need mm-hmm. follow-ups and things like that. So that that's the general idea. And Aver tries to enable uh, healthcare providers and insurance companies to sort of move towards that payment model. So I do Java. I do JavaScript, front-end, back-end, database stuff. Um, I guess mostly actually Python uh, at Aver. Um, but, you know, that's your normal kind of... Uh, nine to five, sometimes a little bit more than that outside <laughs> of work. Uh, cause obviously it's a startup and we've got these live customers and, uh, if something goes down, there's only so many people who can uh, respond to the call. Um, but yeah, so I'm really enjoying that. Uh, and then I've been working on uh, news boot and kind of my spare time. So as you can imagine, um, work and life blur quite a bit, <laughs> And uh, it's important to be able to unplug and sort of make time for yourself and uh, set aside these times. Yeah, absolutely. I completely agree. You know, I did a lot of just tinkering around with uh, mobile apps and with websites and with blogging and all this kind of stuff um, over a long, long period because it was kind of a way for me to unplug from the daily grind at work. Um, But it was also a step in the direction of, hey, someday I want to uh, do this full time and be an entrepreneur and, and have my own startup and and really uh, excited about sure. getting into some sort of media. Um, but it does very much blur the line. I, I like the way that you put that between work and life because you 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 do software development as your full time job, and then you're like, okay, I need to I need a hobby. I need to break out of this work. I need to do something that's not work. And so you end up. <laughs> doing more work <laughs> yeah, yeah. as fun. Yeah. So you want to take advantage of your, of your strengths. And uh, <laughs> sometimes you end up doing the same sort of work outside of work. So yeah, certainly blurring the lines. 
So let me ask you, so when you're working on News Brute, when, when you first got the idea and you start, first started putting that together, was that something that was like, man, I need to do this because uh, there's a gap in the marketplace and there's you know potentially a lot of users and, and trying to turn it into a job or turn it in, not necessarily a job, but turn it into a potential career or potential moneymaker or was it just something purely like, hey, this is entertainment for me and I like working in this space? Now, there's a number of things. Uh, so number one, I used to work at, I, well, I was co-founder of just a sort of a gen, gen, uh, generic or general uh, indie video game news site. So it was a lot of writing. You know, we had a lot, a lot, of, uh, a lot of writing to do on a daily basis, sort of just to keep it a content heavy site going. And, um, and I found that one issue in that space is that there are a lot of... Um, video game news sites specifically. Uh, and so my solution to that problem was to create another one, right, with News Brute. <laughs> but um, I realized that I wasn't, you know, I wasn't super into the writing side regularly. It was really fun at, at, the, at uh, the start because it is definitely an interest of mine. But at a certain point, it just became, well, okay, trying to get the content out, trying to get the content out. And I wasn't necessarily taking advantage of my strengths as a software developer and I thought you know I could do something uh, I could do something better in this space more useful and uh, so with News Brute I found that well okay people have to go around they have to visit a lot of different sites certainly there's things like Reddit you know you can go and you'll see a lot of these articles posted sure um, but it's not maybe the most ideal interface uh, and I think there was I thought there was a little bit more you could be doing there you can go to RSS readers maybe um, but it takes some setup ahead of time that people might not be interested in doing. So with News Brute, I thought, you know, we can get um, sort of the most, I, I, was, I spent a lot of time looking for that metric that would let me figure out, well, what, what news is worth reading in this space? And uh, so I found this popularity metric through a developer API for Feedly, and uh, I was able to kind of compare these find the peak articles of the day, week, month, uh, sort them, and then even show uh, a little preview. You know, not, you know, obviously being, being fair to the content creators, I'm not uh, copying these articles, but I show them, uh, you can show them a preview like you would with like an RSS read or something like that just by clicking, made it gotcha. all in JavaScript, so it's a very fast site. Um, mobile view is good too. Uh, and uh, so, so I found that this is a really great way for you guys to, to come in and basically get a nice snapshot of the day's video game news uh, all in one spot. Awesome. So you started putting this together as kind of an extension of a startup that you had started a while back and then discovered that that startup required too much work. And so yeah. you, you wanted the same result, right? You wanted a great place for people to come to, to check out video game articles and kind of get the best content that was available. But instead of you trying to craft that individual content and make it the best and better than everybody else's content, which, as you said, there's a lot of video game news sites out there and a lot of people writing really great articles, right? It's mm -hmm. okay, well, I'm going to shift my mindset from um, a, a, an article creator or a content creator to an aggregator and uh, like a ranking engine. Yeah, yeah. So awesome. it's got elements from some, you know, kind of existing uh, existing products and, and things like that. So, um, you know, like, uh, I mean, I'm obviously on Reddit a lot. So I thought, well, I really like the way this, this ranking system works. Um, to an extent, and uh, and I thought it would also be nice if people could could preview an article before, uh, you know, making the jump. So tell me about and then this. I send people back to the original sites. Cool. Tell me about this um, this popularity uh, feed, popularity statistics that's in the Feedly API. I'm not familiar with that. API. Yeah, I, I mean, it was sort of like it was sort of a perfect fit because I always wanted something like that. This idea predated, um, uh, I mean, my experience with Feedly by quite a bit. Um, now, Feedly is just, you know, a, you're a normal RSS reader. Mm -hmm. um, but they put out this developer API for people to create, you know, different, different RSS readers and things like that. And that seems like their main target. 
uh, people can create mobile interfaces, different apps for Android and iPhone um, that can take advantage of sort of that RSS technology. But they have what I had been looking for, which is a way to see um, how popular articles are on sites. So number one, the general popularity, how many people are following that jump um, total. And then you also get a relative popularity indicator, which is how popular is this article versus an average article from that site. And that's what I was, what is really useful to me because that's what allows me to take, you know, um, I do a little bit of math on my end, a little bit of, uh, you know, manipulation to sort of figure out like um, peak popularity and things like that. But that's what really lets me um, decide, well, this is an article worth showing because you've got a bunch of pretty disparate sites. Like some are much more popular than others. Mm -hmm. But this allows you to put them all in the same category. You can rank them all together because what you're dealing with is relative popularity, not total popularity. Relative popularity versus an average article on that site. So it could be this article is five times as popular as normal article on that site or one time or 10 times or whatever. Gotcha. So that sounds like a really cool way to kind of promote some uh, popular articles, uh, relative popular articles, but maybe in in smaller blogs, smaller websites that don't get, you know, the, the huge amount of, you know, hundreds of thousands of hits that some of the, the big uh, news sites crank out. Exactly. And that's something that I would like to, right now, it's mostly, the you know, the big sites that I've got uh, on, on uh, Newsbrute, but I would like to start incorporating more and more sites because obviously as someone who previously owned a, uh, um, an indie gaming site they, mm -hmm. you know, this, these small guys, there's a lot of them too. And they can put out some seriously great, uh, introspective game, gaming articles. You know, they're people like personal stories, um, uh, their experience with games and things like that. And there's some really valuable stuff out there, um, that, these monolith, big monolithic gaming sites might not pick up on. So I definitely, you know, featuring those sites uh, in the standout articles from them, something I definitely want to do down the line. Cool. So if, if this stuff is kind of blurring the lines between work and play, right? So mm -hmm. what really is your definition of being unplugged? Well, uh, I'll, I'll usually start by uh, by uh, not software, <laughs> you know, not <laughs> not writing software because that's something that's definitely um, you know I, I consider um, I, I enjoy it's it's a situation where I enjoy you know what I do for a living, which is why you know I decided to do it at home. But it's definitely not my only uh, my only outlet. Um, so there's a number of kind of like strategies that I'll use because I do have trouble, you know, I usually go through phases of, uh, you know, feeling guilty about doing anything other than working on my site in my free time. Mm. And so I, I kind of have to manage that a little bit. And so one thing I'll do is I'll, I'll you know, set up these to-do lists and have a number of tasks on them. And some of them can be, you know, some, some of them might be low hanging fruit and some of them might not, but um, I'll say, okay, we'll try to get at least like something on this list done every day, you know? Uh, and, and once you've done that, you can let yourself feel, feel good about going and, you know, playing a lot of, uh, playing some Overwatch online with your friends some video <laughs> games or hanging out with, uh, my fiance, um, you know, we'll watch American Ninja Warrior or something over Skype together or something like that. Um, so, so, uh, that, that's kind of it is I'll try to do something slightly different than what I do, uh, for a living. And I try to set goals for myself that once I complete them, I allow myself to <laughs> enjoy doing something, uh, other than work. Okay, cool. So you've got these to do lists, right? So you have your work, your nine to five job or your your seven to nine job or, or whatever it is, right? In, in your startup and the healthcare startup that you're working for. And then you have your, your side hustle that you're working on there at Newsbrute. 
you're putting that together, but it sounds like you're trying to put boundaries around like how much you devote to news group or to news brute. And you're saying, yeah. okay, well, here's a list of things and uh, here's my task, right? Here's my backlog. Here's, here's all the things that I want to accomplish. So as long as I can keep making progress on that and just get something done, then I can feel good about, yes, I've got something done and now I can kind of um, reward myself by unplugging, unwinding, and, and spending time away from the computer. Yeah, exactly. So, or sometimes still at the computer, but you know, playing video <laughs> games or something. <laughs> spending time maybe away from software development. Yeah, yeah. So um, why is that? Why is it so important to you, Keith? Like, why do you feel like that you need to set boundaries on on what you're doing, like all the software that you're writing? If it's fun for you and you like working on Newsbrute, then why set boundaries on yourself? Why do you feel like it's important that you need to do other stuff? Well, you know, obviously, as a family man yourself, you understand that. Um, you know, like I, I don't have any. I don't have any kids, but. Um, definitely I like to set aside time to spend a lot of time with my, uh, fiance cause I, um, you know, think that that sort of thing is important. Mm -hmm. Um, so at the very least, you know, doing something like that, I make time every single night. Actually my, uh, so we live in, in separate cities cause she's going to med school and, um, it started when I was, uh, I was living across the country working for a very well known software, software company, big software company that uh, demanded a lot of you and mm -hmm. and we made time every single night to Skype, you know, kind of that long distance thing. And that's something that sort of has persisted since then. We still do it every night. Um, and so that's definitely something that's important. And that we have a set aside schedule. So that's another strategy as well. Um, <laughs> you know, you might be doing something with your family or your friends uh, and it's nice to have that schedule. Uh, to set aside time um, to hang out with them. We even have, a, a, with my friends as well, I've got a, a, a regular like podcast, video game podcast that we'll do you know, once a week. That's, it's pretty casual, but uh, that's just sort of a nice block of time. We just do that almost strictly for fun and just sort of have a defined time to uh, hang out together. Um, but I think it's important because I think burnout is a thing that can happen to anybody, even if you don't expect it. And uh, there can be a time where things get very overwhelming, you know, and it doesn't even need you don't even it doesn't even necessarily need to be a side project. It could just be, um, you know, uh, something that I'm sure a lot of your listeners can relate to is just having a uh, very demanding nine to five or like you said, seven to nine job mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and where they have your phone number <laughs> or you have you're always available on uh you know, a chat client or something, they have ways to get in contact with you any time of the day mm -hmm. and the lines there really blur. And uh, if it becomes overwhelming or you have too many responsibilities and you don't have time away, um, you, you burn out something that can happen to anyone. So I think it's important to set aside time for yourself, value your own time, uh, understand that the world will keep turning if you're not there to answer every call in the, uh, in the middle of the night. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. I used to, I used to be under the delusion, uh, of my importance at an organization that was huge, right? Thousands and thousands, <laughs> tens of thousands of people that worked there. And, uh, when I first started as a contractor, I thought, man, this is just like, this is a six month contract and then I'm out. Like I'm peace out, no hard feelings, but this is not my culture. This is not my jam. Like I got to do something else. And then I actually, for whatever reason, fell in love with just the people that I worked with and, and just found it uh, an amazing organization uh, and amazing people that I worked with and felt like there was a lot of growth opportunities for me. And so I, I really doubled down and and uh, swept that old Chad right under the rug of, of I'm just here for the just here for the money and then I'm gone to something <laughs> else. Right. Yeah. And really um, just became like one of those like drink the Kool-Aid employees. Right. Where yeah. I was just completely committed to the place. And then um I was under this delusion as I kind of went through, um, kind of started climbing that corporate ladder there at the organization, started getting more uh, responsibility, 
Uh, my my bosses started empowering me to get more stuff done. Um, I was in in bigger meetings, you know, just all all the stuff that happens, and uh, it was just under this delusion that it was all about me, and that um, you know I was I was had a lot of great ideas, and I was trying to bring some of that that startup like hunger and focus and drive and change into a really big organization, and that was all fun, um, but. Like it could have absolutely happened and progressed without me, and so I, I got well, that to. That is the a good attitude to have. Well, yeah, I mean, it was it was fun, and it was it was fun, but at the same time, it was also like uh, there was this weight on my shoulder, you know, like mm-hmm. I have to, have to, have to, like go to all the meetings communicate with all the people, like make sure that all the developers are taken care of, Um, not just make sure that everybody's happy on my team, but just recruit, 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 because recruiting for a big organization that is not a software development organization is completely different than recruiting for like a startup where, you know, there's there's a huge culture differences, right? And so, yeah. I don't know. It was just it, it just felt like a ton of responsibility. And then once I figured out that you know what, it is okay to take like a long vacation, like a two week vacation, right. <laughs> and everything's just the way you left it, right? Yep. Just, nothing has happened. The company didn't fall apart, and uh, you're maybe not as critical as you thought you were. That was both humbling and just <laughs> just uh, <laughs> relaxing and rewarding at the same time. Yeah. And, um, and, you know, some people do think of their, I mean, can think of their side projects as, as, you know, me time as uh, time away from work that can be your break. And that's fine too. Uh, if it, if it is, if it is that break and, uh, because I think one thing is having a side project really helps you to value your own time as well. And that's not to say, well, any free time I'm going to spend on my side project and, you know, one nine to five, I'm out. I'm out from mm-hmm. work. You know what I mean? Yep. You, you you take your responsibility seriously, but you also realize that um, things that you do outside of the work outside of the workplace can also be valuable, right? Um, so that helps you value your time uh, a little bit more, and then you start looking at some career opportunities where where you say, "Wow, you know, I can get a." I can get a ten, fifteen thousand dollar raise if I move over to this place. Mm. And then you realize that they are working sixty to eighty hours a week yep. <laughs> from your forty hour a week job. And that's not a raise, you know? No. <laughs> you're because your time is valuable and uh, it's not, yeah, I'll work, you know, an indefinite amount <laughs> for any kind of increase in benefits or or money or something like that. So you have to look at the whole package and then, and you can start to seek out. I recommend, um, if, if work life balance is something you're interested in, uh, seek out companies that have a lot of families there because that's one point in, I think a lot of people's lives where they really start to, uh, take a hard look at work life balance Mm -hmm. because it's, you know, it can be hard to make it work. And, uh, so they, they, I find that they tend to be, uh, more respectful of, of of your time and that kind of thing, and that's that's the situation I'm at now. Um, I've been really pleased with uh, the company that I'm working for. They all, you know, they all get it, and you get you realize that, um, you know, sort of family oriented companies can get a lot done too. Right. <laughs> you know, we um, it's sort of a you know unwritten rule. We'll, we'll have you know you you'll communicate with each other by Slack but we tend not to use cell phones as much. So we still get the messages. If you're out of the office, we got to support these customers. Um, and if someone needs to hop on and fix things, you know, have someone on bug duty, rotating schedule, um, you can hop off and you'll see this, or you'll see this message on your phone. So you can, you can get to it, but, uh, it's not going to interrupt whatever you're doing. So you don't quite feel like you're always on call, always on the clock. Right. Um, Hey, kind of a funny story, but I don't even know if I should tell it. I was interviewing at, I interviewed at uh, a company in the area. Uh, it was a startup and and I did really well through the interview. It's was, it was the only time this has ever happened to me. I did very well in the interview and then uh, they were like, you know what, hang out. Let's, uh, you know, I want you to, they, they actually offered me the position and then they said, why don't you come in and you can check out the office. Like they were kind of in the mode now, okay, now we're going to sell you on us. Mm, okay. um, 
And uh, so they have had me come in and I'm checking out the office. Like, spend a day with us. I'm seeing what they're working on. I'm like, wow, this is some really cool stuff. Um, this, is, this is interesting. I like the technologies you're using. I like the subject matter you, you guys are working on. And uh, then they mentioned, unprompted, they're like, yeah, we're really like sort of a, a work hard, play hard kind of place. So, you know, it's not surprising for us to be working, you know, like 60, 80 hours a week, uh, every week. Um, we'll be here in, on the weekends a lot. And and then I kind of laughed and I was sort of like, yeah, but, but you know, but not like really, but not like always, right? And, and they kind of looked at me weird and they're like, well, you know, yeah, well, you know, um, we're a startup, so <laughs> hmm. I always kind of say that. And I'm like, yeah, but like every week, like you're coming in, like on a release weekend, sure, yeah, I can see you, you might come in, uh, ha- have a pretty heavy week, or you know, you're trying to get something out, or fix something, or support something. And uh, they re- they actually revoked my offer. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> and they said, oh, we didn't think you'd be. <laughs> well, I don't know. They said like, yeah, you know, uh, we we understood your concerns, but um, we're really like a. A, a growing con- company and uh, we might have, you know, so, I mean, and you seem like you're very concerned about work-life balance <laughs> and, and uh, I guess, you know, I couldn't argue with them, <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, not all startups are like that. Not all software companies are like that. Um, so you don't always have to make those choices. <laughs> now, I think that's a, that's a great story, Keith. And I really appreciate you, you telling us that because, you know, I, I I applaud the company honestly for being very honest with honest you. and straightforward. Yeah, yeah, honest and straightforward. Don't BS me about it. Like if if that's your calling, if you feel like, you know, as a startup, we all need to be here and like everybody in the company needs to be here sixty to eighty eighty hours a week and the seventy hour work week is the norm, then cool. Mm-hmm. Let's say that from the very beginning. Hey, right. we want yeah. people right, make that part of your pitch when you're first looking for people um, i like when you come in there and they have the perspective we're, we are actually looking for a good fit we don't want to have a we don't want to be a place that you are going to quit mm-hmm. uh we don't want to be i mean obviously we don't want to be in a position where we're going to let someone go we or maybe you stay on but it's kind of you know it never quite works out right uh, yeah, I can totally understand that, especially from a startup perspective when you don't have that many people. So everybody there, you want to be kind of a drink the Kool-Aid, we're all on the same page kind of person. Absolutely. Well, Keith, in just a moment, I want to tap into this podcast that you're talking about that you host and also how you <laughs> how you uh, maintain these long distance relationships, um, because that can be tough. That can be really, really tough. And so I think you've got some insight that you can teach us in just a few moments. But first, we're going to take a quick break and thank our sponsors. This episode of Hello Tech Pros is sponsored by Burdeen. Siri and OK Google are fun for party tricks, but 97% of smartphone users don't like talking to their phones in public. It's kind of weird. When was the last time you were at the mall and heard someone say, Siri, what's my wife's dress size? Or, okay Google, where did I park my car? Some things are better left unspoken. Burdeen remembers the things you care about and reminds you discreetly through text messages. Names, dates, places, ideas, to-do lists, Burdeen never forgets and is always there to remind you. You don't need to install an app, just text Burdeen a statement and she'll remember. Text her a question and she'll answer. Burdeen is the only contact you have to have on your phone. Meet Burdeen at Burdeen.com. That's B-U-R-D-E-N-E dot com. Or text Burdeen to 480-418-1411. Outside the U.S., be sure to use the country code PLUS1. So for non-U.S. residents, text PLUS1-480-418-1411. With a message, Burdeen. Okay, we're back with Keith Chima. We've been talking to Keith about you know that that blurring the lines between work life balance when uh, what you work on in your nine to five job or your five to nine job if you're working on a startup um, 
you know, is the same type of work that you do in your free time when you're working on your own entrepreneur activities, on your own software for things that you kind of enjoy and you want to do. Um, and, and so you gotta, you gotta set that balance. And also when you're going into work, you gotta really look for opportunities, not just, you know, a, a job that's going to give you a, a 10% bonus, right? Not, a, not looking for a job that's just going to, um, get you a little extra bling in the paycheck, right? But something that's really going to fit your value and your culture and, and your goals and aspirations. And so if that is, you know what, I need something that is not 80 hours, then be extremely upfront um, with with the hiring manager um, about that and say, hey, you know, there there's a there's a difference between um, 70, 80 hours a week is the norm and 70, 80 hours a week on those, you know, production pushes or, and those emergency situations and, mm-hmm. uh, and to separate those. And also, if you're, if you're a startup or if you're a hiring manager at a company, um, you need to be very straightforward and honest with those individuals that are applying for the positions too and say, no, we really expect like for the first three or four years here that everybody's going to, you know, put in the hours, the same amount of hours that we are as the founders. So I think that, Keith, that's really, really important on both sides of the fence. But I want to kind of pull back the conversation to what we were talking about earlier about when you were, um, you know, you and your fiance are having these Skype conversations late at night, um, you know, watching television together. And then you and your buddies who are, you know, not in the same location are are, uh, putting together a podcast. So how do you get these long distance relationships to work? And, and I'm asking not because, um, you know, obviously, well, not obviously, but my wife and my daughter and I all live in the same house, but we have moved across country, right? And so I am uh, a year out from all of my friends and all of my family who I've spent, you know, my lifetime with. And that's very, very difficult for me personally. And I think there's probably a lot of listeners on the on the podcast here today who are like, struggling in the same situation so you're using technology you're putting stuff on the calendar what are you doing to make these long distance relationships work well yeah it's definitely something that i've uh i've experienced and had to deal with from moving you know myself moving around um for for different jobs and friends moving moving away for a job or school or whatever they're working on um through the the you know video game site that i uh, was working on, met friends through there who, you know, we've never lived in the same area. Um, but still some of my, you know, biggest friendships have come out of that. And, uh, I think that, you know, obviously with technology, uh, it, we're in a much better place with it than we ever have been. Um, Skype is great. Google Hangouts, uh, Slack can be, can be really good. Um, uh, people like, uh, you know, just some of these other, other programs you can use Discord and, you know, for if you're a video gamer, TeamSpeak, Discord, things like that. These can all be um, great tools that you can use. Uh, especially, we can sort of act like a a general hangout. Like a Discord, you can have uh, a, you know chats that a bunch of people are invited into, like a permanent chat room, and then a couple calls that anybody could join at any time and just kind of chat with their friends over mic. Um, so. We like to do that sort of thing in terms of just hanging out with friends. Um, uh, my fiance and I, we like to. Um, at, well, we've had friends who say like, "How can you? How do you? How do you? You guys talk for like an hour, two hours every night." And but you do, you know, you can do a lot of different things. We'll, you know, talk, tell tell each other about our days, but we'll also play video games together online. I'm always looking for. Co-op games, uh, especially, you know, more than competitive games you can play mm-hmm. online. So you got your, you know, your Borderlands and your Diablo and, um, you know, MMORPGs or something like Elder Scrolls Online was a recent one for us. So I'm always kind of looking for, for things like that um, because I'll play those with both my fiance and my friends. Um, so looking for things like that. And then, you know, things like the podcast that we'll do, uh, we do those on, on Sundays and that's just an opportunity to, uh, you know, we talk to each other for a long period of time about video games, which is a, you know, shared interest, uh, among us or, um, you know, any, it doesn't have to be a podcast. It could be, uh, another side project, but, you know, I find that 
uh, things like that are both fulfilling and can be a really good way to stay in touch with your friends. Awesome. So what's your podcast? Uh, uh, let's get a shout out. I can tell, sure. It's uh, the Damage Per Second podcast, DPS video game podcast, uh, and it is linked on Newsbrute. Um, so if you look up in the, uh, so newsbrute.com and you look up in the header, you can see the podcast and it'll show the most recent 25 on there and you can follow the jump to uh, the YouTube channel. So what we'll do is we'll stream on Twitch live while we record and someone will play uh, a video game and uh, all of us will talk in a Skype call over it. And so we got a couple people that'll watch us live on Twitch. And then uh, my friend had sort of a, an established YouTube channel where he'd do like let's plays sessions of video games um and he's got a you know small decent number of followers on there and um so it's also just fulfilling because it's it's nice to you know that know that people want to uh to listen to what you have to say and obviously we all used to work at sort of a video game news site where we'd write and that's sort of where this all started so when we stopped you know we, we stopped doing that there was sort of a break um, and then eventually we were like, man, that was like some of the most fun that we've had. And, you know, interviewing certain guests, you, you, you know, usually we won't do interviews, but, but on a, on rare occasions we'll have someone on and, um, and it's like, uh, one, you know, some of the mo things that we had done that we we're, we're most proud of, you know, interviewing certain game developers and stuff like that. And, um, so we wanted to sort of get it going again. And it's nice to have that to look forward to. You know, that's sort of a set period of time when you get to catch up with your uh, friends. First thing we do in the podcast is talk about everything we, you know, uh, what what have you been playing that week? But sometimes other stuff comes up as well, like, oh, yeah, I just had a big move. And so haven't gotten much gaming in this week. But, you know, and uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I really enjoy that. So Damage Per Second Podcast, DPS. Uh, and you can find that on newsbrew.com as well. Awesome. So what have you been playing this week, Keith? <laughs> <laughs> I've been playing a lot of Overwatch, um, and then my uh, and my fiance Jen, just brought uh, The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt back, and I, I started that, but then when the uh, downloadable content for it came out, I uh, let her finish up because she had invested a lot more time in it than me by that point. Uh, but I'm really excited to get back into it. Nice. I haven't played um, many console games since, gosh, probably, well, earlier this year, um, my my nephew and a friend and I were all playing uh, Elder Scrolls Online, and, and that was really hey. fun. Uh, really, yeah, really fun. But uh, that was around the same time that I, I started this podcast and I started working on this stuff full time, and it just, man, it just yeah. fell apart. And I don't know why, it just, it, I, I don't know. I just I did a horrible job of time management, I guess, and it just fell hey, apart. Hey, well, so. if one of those two things had to fall fall apart, I think you picked the right one. <laughs> but, uh, it's, yeah, it's I, debatable. It's debatable. So now you know probably the only thing that I'm playing consistently is uh, Fallout Shelter on iOS. Oh so. yeah. Now that's something I need to get into is more mobile gaming. And there's no, some things that seem no, like they don't. lend themselves really well <laughs> to that platform. I'm. Uh, it's it's fun and it's it's a good distraction, um, but unfortunately, it's like one of those things where the the further you progress in those kind of games, the more time it takes throughout your day to manage all your yep. little people and and uh, all that kind of stuff. So it's I mean, it's, yeah, it's fun. It's a distraction, um, but I don't know. It's it just there's not an end. You know, it's not like okay, I, I beat it. I can move on. Yeah. It's one of those never ending, you know, things that just keeps keeps going every day. That's every day there's there's new resources to harvest and, and new things to do. That's one thing I appreciated about uh, Elder Scrolls Online is that there I mean, you you could there's downloadable downloadable content, you could start a new character, whatever, but there was, you know, a boss that was clearly meant to be this is the last boss of the game. So that's my, uh when Jen and I beat him, then we were like, All right, we're good. <laughs> Seems nice. like a good, as good a point as any to stop. Um, let me just uh, 
send some compliments your way. I, I uh, was really impressed with sort of the operation with uh, your podcast, the scheduling system, and the site. Uh, I think it's really well put together. Uh, oh, it's clear that thanks. I can, yeah, I can definitely see that a lot of work has gone into it. Uh, yeah, there's there's been a lot of work. Um, so I, I don't know if you know the story, but I started this. Just the idea, the uh, the inception was late February 2016, so just a few months ago, and then uh, started batch processing, batch interviewing as many as I could before I launched, and then I launched on April 4th. So um, started net new. There was nothing in place. I bought the domain on I think February 26th or 27th or something, and um, and just started putting it all together. But really everything that's there is because I got feedback from from my guests, right? Of mm -hmm. uh, just like, I don't understand. What are you doing, Chad? What is this about? And what's in it for <laughs> me? And and so every piece of feedback that I've gotten, I've tried to incorporate and, and make it a little bit better so that um, the guests in the future can really understand like what the podcast is about, who I'm talking to, why their story is important, like how is it going to work and all that kind of stuff. So the the iteration that you've seen recently is um, several months of iterations on kind of refactoring and and uh, changing it over time. But I, I appreciate I appreciate what you said. That's very kind. Yeah. Cool. Especially well, the scheduling system. Yeah, that's uh, Acuity. So I didn't build that. That is a a service that I pay for. Um, but gosh, it has made my life as a host <laughs> so much easier because instead of the back and forth, back and forth, you know. Um, hey, does uh, does Tuesday at three o'clock work for you? I don't know, three o'clock yep. Eastern or Pacific? Well, I'm in <laughs> Eastern. Oh no, that doesn't work. Okay, well, you know, and all those emails back and forth and back and forth that we tend to do uh, when we're scheduling meetings. And I did a lot of back in uh, back in February, March, April of this year. Just all that has gone away by implementing this this tool called Acuity. So if you haven't seen it and you need a scheduling system, uh, go to my website, go to hellotechpros.com. Um, you can go to the guest page. So there's a link at the, pop, at the top, top that says guest and you can click on that and see the scheduling system. Um, or you can, I think I've got a link on the resources page. So go to hellotechpros.com slash resources and you'll see uh, that acuity system. It saves me so much time because then the the guests or um, the potential guests, you know, they can go and they can check out my calendar and it links directly to my Google calendar. And and uh, if, if there's a free time available, it's available. And they just, you know, like Keith just selected a time that works for him and and it obviously works for me because it's available on my calendar and we don't have to like email back and forth a hundred times or, or Skype back and forth a hundred times trying to find that perfect fit. So highly recommend that tool. So Keith, um, I have taken a lot of your time here on Sunday and I know you <laughs> want to unplug and go play some video games. So before we go, do you have any final words of wisdom for the audience? The best way that we can connect with you and then we'll say goodbye. Uh, as far as words of wisdom, I'd say, Value your own time. You know, your time is important. You can work on side projects. You can, you know, or you can spend a lot of time in your in your core career, but make sure it's always transparent to you. Make sure that you are putting in the amount of work that you want to put into something and that you're making time for the things that are important to you. One way to do that is by setting goals for yourself, right? And uh, once you have finished your goal for the day or week or month, then allow yourself to be happy and not be anxious about your project mm -hmm. anymore. <laughs> because even if you are, one thing I found is even if you are making time to unwind and or try to unwind and play video games or read a book or hang out with your family, if you're still thinking about your project and worrying about it the whole time, what's the point, right? Right. Uh, so that's, that's sort of my opinion on it. And uh, as far as ways to get into contact with me, um, my contact info is at newsbrute.com. You can just send an email to Keith at newsbrute.com. Uh, Newsbrute is on Twitter. It's on Facebook. Uh, so any of those are great ways to get into contact with me. Awesome. And we'll have all of those uh, resources, um, all of those links linked up here in the show notes page. So this is episode number 98. So if you go to hellotechpros.com slash 98, You'll find all of Keith's websites and his Twitters and his interwebs and everything else that, <laughs> <laughs> that we can hook up. 
on the show notes page. Keith, thank you so much for joining me on Hello Tech Pros today. I really Absolutely. value for your, your wisdom, your insight, and appreciate you taking time out of your busy Sunday to spend time with us. All right. Great. Awesome. Tech Pros, man, just relax. Go play a video game. Go read some articles on Newsbrew. It's going to be fun. <laughs> go check out go check out Keith's podcast because I know if you like video games like I do, then you're going to want to check it out. DPS Video Game. We'll have it linked up in the show notes. You've been listening to Keith Chima, and I'm Chad Bostic. And until next time, take care. The show notes page for this episode can be found at hellotechpros.com slash 98. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a review, subscribe to this channel, and check back tomorrow. This has been Sunday Being Unplugged, but tomorrow my featured guest and I will get fired up and ready to face the week with Motivation Monday. On Tuesday, we'll be discussing productivity, Wednesday, leadership, Thursday, technology, Friday, people and communication, Saturday, entrepreneurship, and back again on Sunday to get unplugged. And I'll talk to you tomorrow. Tomorrow.